Hi, my name is Katie, and today I will be presenting a very important educational philosopher, Frederick Frobel. And Frobel is known as the founder of kindergarten. Now, Frederick Frobel was born in Germany in 1782. His father was a pastor, so as a child, Frobel really began to explore Christianity, and he sought to understand the difference between the spirit and the flesh, and this really... Um, you know, he struggled with this, and this really kind of influenced his studies. Now, he also lost his mom before he was one year old, so he felt that he had a very troubled childhood, especially because his dad was so strict. So this also influenced his studies as he wanted children to be respected and to better understand their development. Now, he began his studies at the University of Jena, now, after that, he opened his own school, actually, in 1816, and then he went on in 1826 uh, to publish his book, The Education of Moon, and finally, in 1837, he established the first kindergarten in Germany. Now, sadly, his schools were shut down by the government because of the political tensions at the time, and they were also concerned with his more liberal ideas and disagreed with some of his philosophies. Now, for Frobel's philosophy, he begins it with the idea and the overarching concept that God is the divine unity and that all life is based on this eternal law of unity and what unifies us all in the universe is the spirit of God itself. So God is our unifying factor. And as humans, we are able to discover our own potential and we are therefore able to reveal God uh, to those in the world around us. Now, Frobel really focused on the importance of experiences and children's play in their education. He felt that when children began to play, this was their first sign of purposeful activity, working towards their uh, purpose and their self-discovery. Now, he felt that teachers should structure play for children in order to help them discover and experience the world around them. And he suggested that there be gifts that are used for children to experience uh, play and lead towards self-discovery. Now, he created 20 what he called gifts and occupations, which were toys and activities that were given to these children. Now, these included things like blocks, spheres, squares, and uh, cylinders that came as a numbered set so children could uh, discover the relationships between these. And he describes his curriculum that the order of subjects to be taught supports the learner's inner development, while the whole program of study should help the students to realize the reflection of the unity of life in the unity of knowledge. So again, going back to that concept of unity, and he felt that, again, this curriculum should focus on respect for students, the differences and uniqueness of students' learning styles, as well as their ability to learn through play. And I feel like his educational philosophy can be highlighted through his quote that play is the highest expression of human development in childhood, for it alone is the free expression of what is in a child's soul. So again, going back to that idea of self-potential and the soul with the spirit of God unifying the world. Now, he opened his first kindergarten in Blankburg, Germany, and it was intended for children ages 3 through 7, and he wanted this kindergarten to help prepare um, his students and to protect children as he did not have this protection as a child, and he wanted them to play in this safe and respecting environment and also to help the teachers learn how to structure this play so they could continue to use this in other areas of education as children grew. Now, while the government disagreed and felt that his ideas were too liberal and not structured enough, uh, this idea eventually crossed the water and came to the U.S. in 1837 when the first kindergarten was established in St. Louis. And we still use kindergarten today and still use a lot of his thoughts and ideas, one that children should you know, play to experience the world around them, that the teacher should provide this structured play and should respect children's uniqueness and also respect their different uh, learning capabilities and their different ways of learning and also begin this education at an early age. Now, like some 
said he was a little bit liberal in his thinking, and as children progress, I do feel that some more additional structure and some more specific curriculum aside from just structured play and kind of explaining things to students a little bit more as a teacher can also help them develop in this age. But again, play and the idea of kindergarten and experiencing the world at a young age is extremely important to children's development and their education. And we can thank Robel for that. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.